I just had a wonderful conversation with Integrated, Megan and Kara. You're going to meet them really soon. And we were just kind of talking about providing frameworks and education and, you know, ensuring that teachers have autonomy, kind of giving some ideas and direction and, you know, some commonalities, um, you know, amongst our classrooms, but really encouraging teachers um, the autonomy to use their personality, to be them best, their best selves. And one of the conversations I was just kind of reflecting on after we recorded this podcast is the idea that, you know, schools script, you know, teachers, it does not make any sense to me. I don't understand it. I don't know what it means. It's not something that, you know, we did when I was teaching in Canada. I don't know if any schools in Canada do that type of thing. And I understand like a curriculum. I understand like, Hey, here's things that we're gonna do, but at the end of the day, we always talk about this notion of personalizing learning, but then we expect everyone to create kind of the same experience for all kids. And that's not actually beneficial because all kids are different. You know, you could, if you could tell me on October 10th at 9 30 AM, here's where we'll be in math before you meet your kids, you got some problems. There's some issues there because we actually really have to get to a point where, you know, we have some ideas of the things that we need to do in our classrooms, but we give the autonomy and let the personality um, of the teacher really kind of drive this, right? And and if it's, um, I think that sometimes if the, maybe the teacher isn't doing the job that they actually need to do and things like that, that's a whole other conversation. But to get everyone do, to do the exact same thing doesn't just dishonor the, the staff, it does that for the students as well. And that's what I was just kind of thinking about this. I don't want to start up this podcast negative because I, I really love talking to these two educators because they're talking about some solutions to really provide that autonomy to educators to kind of find their own way to do things, you know, that's most beneficial to the kids in front of them. So I hope you're going to love the podcast. I had a really great conversation. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I'm so blessed today to have two wonderful educators from Wyoming, right? I actually, I actually think you're my first Wyoming educators. Woo woo, sweet. <laughs> hey, just for that, I know. I know everyone loves when you do this. But you might not be, but you know, if, <laughs> if I had someone else on, that'd be basically half of the population, right? Pretty much. My it's only jokes. Close. My only jokes, right? <laughs> Anyways, it, uh, Megan and Kara, they run uh, Integrated, and we're going to talk about what that is and a little bit more, but they're both teachers right now. Are you actually in the same school as well? Yes. Yeah. And we're teaching that. partners. <laughs> teaching partners. I'm a little disappointed you don't have matching uh, earphones, so I'm a little thrown off yeah. by that, right? So, Well, to be fair, I did have a pair of matching ones for her to use, and she didn't use them. I right. don't like headphones. Absolutely. We do have matching shirts on, though. Yep. There you go. Oh, they got the integrated <laughs> shirt. Okay, so May and Kara, thanks for being on. Can you just both, um, and well, Kara, we'll start with you. Just tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do today, and kind of how you got there. Yeah. Um, my name is Kara, obviously. Uh, this will, I just finished, we just ended the school year, finished my 12th year teaching. Mm. I started in kindergarten, taught there for a couple of years, looped up to first grade, taught there for five, six years, looped up again to second. Kara, and I was so hoping that you were going to say I started in kindergarten and then my second year went to grade one. And I was just hoping that I would just go all the way to grade 12 because I'm like, and um, I'm well. Like, after what five years of second grade, I'm now looping to third. So I'm just wow. graduating. I just keep graduating. So, <laughs> um, so next fall, I'll be headed to third grade, which I'm super excited about. Well, I'm gonna, before we before we get to Megan, I'm going to ask you. So, can you tell me like looping um, with your students, right? Because you actually like go with the same group of students, right? Yep. When, you, when you're doing a loop. Mm -hmm. So before we get to Megan, what is the biggest benefit? of looping and well, actually let's start with this one what is the biggest detriment of it because it's not it can't all, it can't all be good um i guess like you know in the in the beginning of the school year like yeah. everyone kind of has a fresh start you you kind of get that honeymoon phase well when you loop you don't get that right you don't get that phase anymore and so right. the students you know that are going to be tough they're tough right away or right. And so, um, but I guess on the flip side of that is 
you know what you're in for type of thing. You've already right. kind of developed um, strategies and things that work to help that student. And um, the biggest benefit, honestly, is you kind of get started right away because the kids know your expectations. The relationships are built right. um, both with students and families. And so um, I would say, yeah, it's, it's one of the best experiences that right. um, I've gotten to do as a teacher is to loop up. Um, May gets to come with me this year. So she gets oh, to experience cool. that for the first time. And so I'd say as an educator, if you get a chance to try it, cause it is, it's a pretty phenomenal thing. Yeah. Like I actually was, uh, I think it was probably in my fifth, fifth year we, I went to a school and they, we did looping. It was maybe my sixth or seventh year, but we did that. And one of the like awesome things was, was the home communication right? Like it was just way more comfortable. You'd establish relationships, you know, before. Um, but I, I think, I think the other aspect of it was sometimes we had to make decisions because it's not like a kid. I think sometimes we like kind of like, Oh, this kid's bad. Right. Mm -hmm. Or this an issue, but there's sometimes just a personality conflict yeah. and that, yeah. that's, that's okay. Right. We have personality yeah. conflicts and it's like, th that maybe there's sometimes like a conversation that has happened like, Hey, we're just not, this is not working and yeah. I think this would be better. And it's the same thing too. Like I, I know some teachers um, who weren't very strong and it was what they were doing. And it wasn't that they weren't strong teachers. They were just in the wrong position. Do you know what I mean? And it's mm -hmm. like, you know, we'd celebrate that if we got them in the right position and they started to excel, but somehow it's like a, a knock on, um, you know, it's a knock on the teacher or the kid if there's like just a, a mismatch there. Right. And I think, you know, we, we do everything to help kids. And sometimes that's a tough thing to do because there's a feeling of failure, but it's actually a way to find success. So I yeah. appreciate you sharing that. So yeah. Megan, a little bit about you, what do you do today? And now I know you're looping, so you gotta, yeah, <laughs> yeah, here we go. Loop. So tell us a little bit about your career and how you got to what you're doing today. Sure. Um, I've always kind of wanted to be a teacher, but I have been in second grade for 12 years which oh, I was, wow. yeah, I, I mean, I feel like I just know how their little brains work and where we're going. You know, I just kind of, they're there. It's the best grade, right. but you know, I'm ready. I'm ready for something, you know, different. And, um, I'm very excited with this group of kids. So I think it'll be a great experience. Um, I'm excited for it. Great. Great. Two is probably one of my favorite grades to teach because you like, there's like, uh, there's some independence. Yeah. Right? But they well, still really love some, you. There's also, <laughs> yeah, they love you. There's some. There's a, there's just enough neediness. Yes. You know I mean? yeah. Just kind of, you know, you st so there, there's something really powerful with that. Are you like, are you nervous about trying something new going into the next school year? I mean, for a hot second, I was like, oh boy, what's the math like? Right. Because man, you know, I have my moments of of math need, but uh, right. Right. <laughs> I think. I think it will be, I'm, I'm really excited to dig into, you know, like the content of like this, the history and the social studies and the science right. stuff, you know, to really get into that stuff. I think it'll be, I think it'll be really phenomenal to try. Of course, you, everyone's nervous once they try something new, but. Right. Totally. I like, I, I we're, <laughs> right. It, and like that, it's not like, I'm a big advocate, obviously, of, you know, initiating change yourself. Um, but a lot of times, it, even for me who talks about it, it's terrifying. It's scary. There's things that we're, you know, doing with my uh, family right now. It's a little bit terrifying, but it's like, yeah, but I know that if I, I think sometimes the, the bigger risk is staying somewhere and mm -hmm. as opposed to, to going. So, um, did you, did you ever find, and you can be honest with me on this because nobody's listening, right? <laughs> At least we know you're, yes. At least we will know you're both not listening to my podcast. I'm just kidding. So the, did you ever find you're just on autopilot and you're just doing the thing? Did you ever you find know, um, I thought that I would at one point in time, my husband goes, well, can't you just like do the same lessons as you did last year on the same right. day? Right. And I, I just am not that type of person. I don't, right. I am always trying something different, doing something new. And I think just this year I kind of stopped and was like, I wonder if I'm teaching this as a, as it should be, or am I not giving them enough because I think they already know, right. You know, just kind of, you know, not reading my kids as best as maybe I should have been. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's the perfect time, you know, to change because I could, I just felt it, that it was just, 
it's time. Right. So I'm very excited. Um, never one of my 12 years in second grade have been compared to any other. They're very much all different. Right. Well, there, there's, the, there's like, um, so I, I know we, we, I know you, you both run, correct? Is that, yeah, I, yeah. I mentioned that, right? Mm -hmm. And when you exercise, one of the worst things you can do for your body is the same thing over and over again. It actually, yeah. your body starts to get used to it and then, and then it actually doesn't grow. Like it, you actually, right. so even it like it's, you know, so, um, I do, I'm into weightlifting and stuff like that. And I try to, you know, change things up every certain amount of time. So like there's, there's some power in that routine. Mm -hmm. but sometimes when you get into that, even I, you know, and I know like what I appreciate, you know, when the conversation with you, I think, I think the, the thing that's really powerful is that you know that every set of kids that are coming to your class, even though they're the same age, they're different, right? And you're yeah. trusting to the kids that are in front of you, not just saying, well, these are the grade two kids. These are our new grade two kids, right? They, they all have their unique interests and abilities. And so I think that that's, um, I, I would love, I would actually, we should like schedule a podcast for next year to say like, how did it go? Yeah. How was, yeah. How, was how was the change? Right. Cause I, Let's you know, a lot, people, a lot of people are doing that. So uh, I, I love that. So, what so integrated so you have this up on the screen i know that you you tagged me in instagram today i know <laughs> yeah. that even though you're both individuals um but like can like what is what is integrated what is it and like what do you what do you mean by it like like i don't know just dig in tell me more um well it's a business and a framework within our business that meg and i created okay. together we always say, you know, two teacher developed by two teachers for teachers, because right. that's the whole intent. Um, with us still being in the classroom, we just wanted to create something that creates more effective instruction for teachers, that creates instruction that kids are excited about. Um, and so that's kind of where it started um, with her and I, the whole integrated. Um, right. Meg actually thought of that. Um, before we launched it a while back, which is pretty clever. Um, the whole idea was right, getting some credit there. <laughs> shout out. You need, you need your own shout out button. I'm not good. <laughs> I'm going to make Kara get her own shout out button. <laughs> I'll just remember that for next We're time. We're going to do that. Um, the whole idea behind that was, you know, with our framework, we're trying to, um, put together, you know, the writing, the reading, the science, social, right. social studies, or trying to um, develop con or develop units and lessons that are content driven, not right. skills driven. And so that's kind of where the integrated part. And then the capital ED is just to focus that focus it on education itself. Um, okay, so give me give me an example, like when you say it's, it's content driven, not skills driven, give yeah. me an example, like, where you saw it was skills driven and then how you moved it to, to content driven and why you believe that's more beneficial. So, um, a lot this of times is, this, you, is you on the spot. this is putting you on the spot. It's okay. Um, so a lot of times when you look at the common core, a lot of districts will have, you know, priority standards, supporting standards, essential standards, like wherever you go there, they will have those kind of deemed well mm -hmm. within those common core, um, let's just take a uh, main idea, for example. And so, um, our district for a while, they're like, you, you we're going to make a unit on just main idea and we're going to teach it for so many weeks and then your kids will be tested on it. And so instead of taking a content, so for example, science, instead of taking it and learning about landforms, we would take a whole bunch of different nonfiction texts and in each individual text students are supposed to be finding the main idea. Right. And then at the end, they would be assessed on finding the main idea, which is all well and good, kind of. Um, but within that, you are leaving out that in-depth knowledge that could be happening, such as, you know, the vocabulary and um, just that in-depth knowledge of a specific thing and the learning experiences that could be happening within that as well. So instead of just focusing on main idea, mm -hmm. our thought is taking, um, using, for example, landforms and then 
putting the skill with it, but landforms being the main focus throughout those weeks of study. Mm -hmm. And so, and then not just main ideas, but being taught, but also comparing and contrasting and um, nonfiction text, nonfiction text features, um, informative writing, even opinion writing. And you can put so many things within that amount of time. And then your kids are walking away with those skills, but then they're also walking away with a deeper knowledge of an area of content. So like that, when you're, when you're talking about this, and I know we were having conversation about this before, I know that you use the terminology frameworks, right? Mm -hmm. And so you're in Wyoming, which let's be honest, is different than Edmonton, Alberta, right? Yes. You know, the weather could be the same because we both get snow today. (laughs) Like, you know, I live in a different city which is going to be different than, you know, um, maybe uh, Texas versus, you know, California versus Ohio, blah, blah, blah. So I think one of the conversations that I really appreciate that we were talking about is like, how do you create some like, I don't, I don't know if structure is the best word, but like I, maybe, and maybe it is frameworks, but also provide teachers autonomy in the sense that like, here's some like things to kind of consider but we're not telling you how to do your job either. Cause I think a lot of times that's what happens with a lot of this stuff is mm-hmm. that, you know, and I'm very cognizant of that. I always say to people like, I'm not, I'm not telling anyone how to teach. That's not my role, but I want you to kind of just look at learning differently and kind of go through that. But you have like, I'm here to provide ideas. You have to figure out the solutions cause you know, your kids, I don't. Right. And like Megan, yeah. you talked about this too. Like even, even with your own context, you could have used this, you you switch things up i know you you utilize your own work obviously but you have different kids every year so like how do you how do you create that balance to ensure that there's some like i don't, I don't even know what the term i'd like to use because i don't want people get stuck into like because we the word scripted is like to me is one of the worst words in education right. i don't think i don't think it take don't take away my personality don't take away my abilities and i want t- kids to have different experiences with different people but obviously there is some common things that we should be doing in our classrooms as well. So how do you kind of find that balance of like providing some somewhat of a framework, but also ensure in, encouraging you no know, teacher autonomy in the classroom? Yeah. And I think, you know, when we, when we started to come up with how can we, you know, we started doing this in our classrooms for years and we thought, man, this is really working. Hmm. Um, we started loving to go to our jobs and teaching the kids were loving it. Um, and we thought we should probably share this, share this out. And, um, the thing that I think brought us excited to school every day is because we had that creativity right. because, you know, Kara and I might plan together and have the same unit and the same content and the same standards. But if you walk into our classrooms, it is delivered completely different. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and the, the beauty with the framework that we created, the whole intent was to get away from a script mm-hmm. right. because Meg and I, we have, that's what we've been handed for. 12 years of our teaching right. you know, career. And it does, it takes away that personality of the teacher. It takes away the creativity of a teacher and the students. And it also makes teachers feel like they're kind of put, um, you know, in in, in, inside of a box that shouldn't necessarily be right. there. Right. And so the framework, what it does is we are provide, per, excuse me, providing consistency with what standards are being taught at a certain time right. within each subject. But then the creativity comes with how that instruction is being delivered. It's coming with how or what learning experiences are being created for those kids for the abstract to become concrete. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's kind of where um, the, you know, the uniformity comes is with, yeah. with the teachers working together, deciding what standards to hit at certain times, but the creativity comes in the planning and um, what they're wanting to decide to how to deliver it. Okay. So I, I'm going to, I'm going to see, this is going to be a tough one. It's going to be a super tough question I'm throwing at you. Cause like, it's a hard one to answer for all the work that I do, I think for every educator. So I'm a parent that my kids are in your classroom mm-hmm. and you're doing something that's like, what, what is this? This is different than, you know, maybe my experience. So I say, okay, you're doing this different stuff. How do you know this works? So like, how, how would you, how would you, what examples, like, how do I know this works? 
you know, like it, when you see the kids, cause you said like, you know, you, you actually said we like, we saw this was actually working with our students. How do you know that? Yeah. Well, I think like on a personal level for them, I knew it was working because the buy-in was there. Mm -hmm. The engagement of the students were there. They were excited. They were, you know, collaborating with each other, all those, you know, skills, hard and soft skills that they were doing. Um, and then parents were messaging us and saying like, Hey, you know, Johnny came home and we're talking about erosion. Like, can you right. tell me, you know, what are we doing in here? And, um, so that part started to come and then, um, and then the testing started to happen and started to show right. our state testing, you know, that we have to do our scores were without really teaching to the test or working super hard to make sure that we get, you know, that 80%, it was happening right. just with us doing our job every day. And so I think that kind of was like eye opening as well for us that what we're doing is working. Um, and, and I think too, like the students conversation in the classroom, just daily you know, just what teachers would do on a normal, normal occurrence, you know, teacher observation, you know, how students are interacting mm -hmm. with one another, how they're interacting with us and the content and the material. Right. Um, so, yeah. So, so this is a, like, I think this is a really important point to make, and it's kind of interesting how you went there, right? You had, you said you had kids going home, talking to their parents about this stuff, and then they were doing well on, on your test. Right. And like, I'm not, I'm not, none of us are like, oh, state testing is the best, right? But it is a reality. And I, I don't like when people like, yeah, okay, let's let's get rid of it. I understand that. But I could also say, don't worry about the state test, which is really easy for me to say because I don't deal with them. And then you lose your jobs and then you try to move to Canada, right? Like that's <laughs> Or Wyoming, I guess. I don't or, know. You know, whatever. But I think part of it too is that we have a bunch of kids who actually have the ability to read mm -hmm. and you know, they're really good on state tests. They just actually end up hating reading because of the way they're taught. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And so yeah. like, that, that's part of the issue is that if you actually kill a kid's love of learning, but they do well on the test, we've done more damage than good. Absolutely. And it's like for our own ego and our own scores that we can show to the public. Whereas if you actually get a kid really to love learning, the test will be fine. That is something that I, I really believe in. So this is, I, I'm, I'm going to go a little personal on this question here because I am actually... So because of how I record the podcast, I actually record these podcasts um, typically when I'm at home and I just do a bunch and then I, I space them out. So this, this podcast is actually going to be um, after I visit your school district. So it's not even going to be published until I think September. Okay. So I'm coming okay. to your school district. Yep. So what do you hope I do for your staff on that day? This is, good. This is I'm like Ooh. curious. Right. And then we can go back and revisit it and say, like, did he do did the he thing? Do that? Yeah. Um, I might not be like, nah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 that's not good. Um, yeah. You know, I just, you know, George, with your books and your, your, just your posts and what you're about, I, I just, I'm excited for our district to hear your messages. Um, you know, just starting off the year for any teachers, any school district, right. we're always, overstressed, overloaded, overdone. And we haven't even seen our kids yet. Right. And so just kind of like bringing that excitement back and like that love of learning, you know, that it's not just mm. about those, those scores. It's about, you know, the relationships it's about, you know, kind of maybe even thinking outside your box a little bit more and trying something new, you know, um, for your students and for yourself. Mm -hmm. And what about you, what about you care? What do you hope? What do you hope I do? <clears throat> Um, I guess similar to Meg, I think just bringing a message of hope and excitement. I feel this year has just been very hard. Um, our district this year, I don't know. It just seemed like around every corner there is, there's just something like an obstacle or like, I just feel like there's just been so many things and right. just, you know, a message of hope and excitement and, you know, maybe stepping outside that box and being willing to do what is best for students, not necessarily what is best for, you know, I don't know if this is the right thing to say, but like what's best for admin or, mm -hmm. right. you know, um, but really focusing on those kids and, um, and yeah. on a, on a lighter note, stepping into our classrooms, that would be totally cool. Just show, just, up, there. Just show right. up for lunch. That'd be great. That'd be great. Yeah. They actually like those, those days are really I, opening day is like my favorite 
thing to do. And part of the reason I think is because um, I, I have been sitting there and going like, kill me. What, why are they doing this to us? Right. <laughs> like knowing how important of da- the day that is, because I think I've been in a point in education where I was like in that room and I was like, oh, do I want to be here this year? Like, do I want to mm-hmm. be doing this? Or, you know, um, and so you, you take that, I, I never take those days for granted, especially that, because you have a bunch of like, it's not like a conference where people like pay to go. They're excited. They might've heard of you. They, you know, they're, they're like, want to be there. Like there's a lot of people in those spaces. It doesn't matter the district that do not want to be there. They're questioning if they want to be there and mm-hmm. to kind of, you know, get them excited. But I will tell you this, I, 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 ne- I, I, everyone's fair game on those days too. And I think a lot of times administrators, uh, I've had to have these conversations. I'm like, I'm not here to like, to like say the thing you want me to say. I'm here to like do what's best for kids. And if some of you might feel as administrators, you you might feel challenged by some of the stuff too, because we're, you know, I'm a big believer. You want to do what's best for kids. You put teachers in the best situations to do those things. And sometimes I don't know if we do that. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Right. I'm I'm curious. the so it's hey, last be- yeah, I can't wait. I'm I'm looking forward to to seeing you in person. We'll get a new selfie to replace the one yeah. that you can't find. I'm gonna that's find whole, it. That's a whole other conversation. <laughs> can you actually? Hey, can I ask a favor of you? Yeah. Go to your administrators and ask if you can introduce me on that day. Okay. See if you can. We'll just see if you can. It'd be kind of cool. Yeah. I, Cause I like the one thing I hate is like people are like George, but, and I'm like, nobody cares. Like yeah. just personal, something fun, you know, like people need to laugh that day. People need to relax. It's not Absolutely. Uh, the formal crap. It's not my, it's not my job. So last question. Yeah. I got for you. So what, so we're going into, um, 2022, 2023 school year. Kind of, as you mentioned, like basically every educator I've talked to, um, this last year was like sucked. Like just straight up sucked, right? Yeah. For, for like a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And I think somebody, I just had someone on the podcast and they said the I think the biggest letdown was not that it was hard, but we thought it would be better than the year prior. Do you know what I mean? I think yeah. it was like, or it was like, you know, we'd have more stability. And it was like, yeah. just, it was like the, the expectation caused some of the issues. Right. And I don't know if that's true. So we're mm-hmm. going into a new school year, right? What, what is the best piece of advice you can give? And I'll, 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 Kara, I'll start with you and then maybe you can finish this off. Kara, what's the best piece of advice you can give to teachers going into this school year, which they've already started based on when they're listening to this podcast? Right. I guess just remember your why. Mm-hmm. Remember why you're there. Um, some days it's hard, but, you know, our why is those, those babes in front of us and, mm-hmm. you know, they are there every day excited to see us and they're excited to see what we're going to teach them. Um, so just remember your why. And also I would say um, just remember we're flexible. You, you know, we're taught to be flexible within our teaching, right. within our classroom. So um, just be flexible and give yourself some grace. Right. And I will add to that. Administrators don't make teachers question why. That's yeah, a thing, yes. right? Like don't put teachers in a situation where they're like, why am I even here? Because I think a lot of times we encourage that advice, but then also leadership is like, gives you a bunch of crap to do. And it's like, this is not what I signed up for. Right. And so, so I think that's, so let's remember that too, as administrators. So Megan, what's, what's that piece of advice you'd love to give to, to teachers yeah. as they enter this, this new school year. And basically this is you gotta get it right. This yeah. Is, well, whatever it is, it better work. No pressure or anything, but I mean, to second off Kara, I think, right. you know, not only to remember like why we're there too, but to lean on your other peers and your mm-hmm. teachers and your other educators. You know, I right. think that the best teachers are ones that collaborate and self-reflect and, you know, move on. And, you know, again, what Kara said to try something new and be okay with that. But, you know, that family, um, I really do believe that our our school it, is probably one of the best um, because we are we are like family. We lean on each other, not only in our personal lives for family, but also like at school. And so just kind of like finding some of those people that you can kind of like do this crazy life with right? and, you know, building that up. Yeah. The thing to add to that is 
be a fountain, not a drain. So like when oh. people like, I, I appreciate that you encourage people to lean on you, but I know people that I'm like, I don't want, like I sometimes with social media, I'm like, nah, I'm not going there. Cause it's like, it's like a bad staff room some days. Right. And right. Like, and it's so where like, they, they go to say hi to you and you see them coming down the hallway and you just like jump right, into a classroom right, real right, quick. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, it's good to lean, but be, be a person that is leanable, I guess. Yes. Right. Let's mm -hmm. say that. So Megan Kara, it was awesome to chat with you. I so appreciate you taking the time to be on the podcast and, uh, everyone I encourage you to check out integrated ad deal integrated. Sorry. <laughs> I had, to, I had to practice like 80 times. So like, <laughs> so, um, check them out in the podcast or in the links below, make sure you, you connect with them. And I'm looking forward to, uh, seeing more work out of you the next little while. So, uh, and I can't wait to see you in person in Wyoming, Wyoming, the so Wyoming <laughs> state tour that I am doing. Yes. I'm going to two districts in Wyoming this summer. I can't wait. So, so thanks so much great. for being on. Thanks everyone for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks, thanks. George.